Today I have the Extreme Production Spin Brushless Motor for the Blade 130X and this is an 8000 kilovolt brushless outrunner motor and this is what the package looks like. I'm going to open it up, take out the motor, show you what it comes with. The first thing that you'll see is the little instruction sheet that it comes with. And basically all that shows is that you need to cut your Blade 130X frame so that the motor will fit. And that's the same for any aftermarket motor that you're going to put in there. Inside we have the motor. Uh, the motor it comes with the stock motor connector. Uh, if your motor spins backwards, just flip the connector around so you can plug it in either way. And this is what the motor looks like. And also include it are the motor mounting screws and an 11 tooth pinion. And this pinion it's a press on pinion, which means you just press it onto the motor shaft. However, unless you press it on exactly straight, you do run the risk of bending your motor shaft a little bit, which isn't good. So unless you have the tools to put this on straight, uh, I recommend using a slip fit pinion, which I have here. It's the same size as the one that it comes with, except this one just slides right onto the motor shaft. And then you can secure it with Loctite 609 or anything similar to this. So now I'm going to go ahead and install the pinion. Okay, so now I have the pinion installed onto the motor shaft. And you're going to want to give that some time to dry before you go and fly with this motor. Uh, next, I'm going to show you how to install the motor into the frame, and that includes splitting the frame in half and some disassembly. So I'm going to show you what you need to disassemble and how to put this motor in. And along with this motor, I'm going to be using an extreme production steel motor mount. And that's just so that it increases the stiffness of the plastic stock frame. Uh, it's not required, it's just something optional, and I'm going to choose to use it, and I'll show you that as well. Now I've started disassembling the frame so that I could split it in half, and so far all I did was remove the boom supports. Uh, you could just undo the front screws and then swing them back. I removed the landing gear screws, and once you do that, the bottom of the frame, you could start to split it open. And that will allow your 3-in-1 to slide forward, and you can just unplug the four servos and unplug the motor plug. So now I'm just going to continue to remove the screws on this side of the frame, as well as the servo, as well as the head I'll probably remove. I'm not sure if I'll have to yet. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to remove screws so that I can fully take off this half of the frame. And I'll show you what that looks like once I do it. So the frame is now split. I just undid all the screws. And there is one in here that you might miss because it's really not that visible. But make sure you get it. Otherwise your frame will not split apart. Once it splits, your entire head assembly will just fall right out. And your tail assembly, you can pull it right out as well. And also, you need to remove your canopy mounting rods. And then you will be left with this. And you'll have easy access to unscrew the motor and remove it. And then go ahead and mount your new motor. And now I'm going to remove this motor. And then I'll show you the steel motor mounting plate as well as mounting the spin 8000. Now I removed the stock motor, uh, the pinion, it's kind of a tight fit to squeeze through the hole, but you can do it. And 
Now I'm going to go ahead and cut both sides of the frame up here by the battery tray. And that is so that we could fit the spin motor in there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it and show you what the final product looks like. So now I have the frame cut so that we now have enough room for our, our spin motor. And right here it looks like it's touching, but it's not screwed down or anything. It's just placed in there just to show you what it looks like. But if I hold it flat down against the motor mount, you can see we have enough clearance. And you're going to want the wires to come out the back. And they'll now be in the same location as your stock motor. And one thing to note is all your servo wires, you're now going to have to route on the outside of the frame because this is an outrunner motor, so you don't want the wires touching the can. And as you can see, it's flat against the motor mount, and we have enough clearance with our front elevator servo. It's a close fit, but they don't touch. You'll be perfectly fine. So... I'll take off this frame half so you can see it. So this is basically what it's going to look like once it's installed. There's no screws or anything yet because I'm going to use the steel motor mount. So now I'm going to go get the steel motor mount if you choose to use something like that. You can also use a carbon fiber plate. but. If you want, you can mount it just how it is right now with the screws. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to mount it with the steel plate. So I'll be right back and I'll show you how to do that. So here I have the steel motor mount and it comes with some longer screws for mounting the motor. And this is just going to sit right here between the uh, motor mount on the stock frame right underneath it. And it's just going to help stiffen up the frame so that there's less flex in it. And this motor mount, uh, I would only use it with an 11 tooth pinion because if you change your pinion size, you're going to have to adjust your gear mesh. But as you can see, this does not have slotted holes, so you won't be able to adjust it. So if you're using a different size pinion other than 11 tooth, you might want to go with a carbon fiber one because that you could slide out the holes so that you could adjust your gear mesh. So now I'm gonna go ahead, install my motor mount, install the screws, install the motor, and I'll show you what that all looks like once it's all secured to the frame. Right now I have the motor and the steel motor mount installed. And as you can see, my gear mesh is just right. Might be a little hard to see in the video, but right now the frame's just pressed together. It's not screwed together or anything, but the gear mesh is about the same as stock. The screws, uh, you want to use thread lock on them because the motor is metal, and you don't need a lot of torque to get them in there. Just tighten them down. You can see the motor, it does come close to the front servo, but it doesn't hit. So right now I'm going to put all the screws back into the frame and then we should be good to go. So here's the finished product. The helicopter is back together. And as you can see I ran the wires on the outside of the frame. I'm going to secure them with something. Right now they're just there, but I will secure them down. Uh, the motor plug, it exits the same spot as the stock motor. If your motor spins backwards, you could just flip this plug around and you'll be good to go. And other than that, that's all that you need to do for adding an aftermarket outrunner brushless motor to your Blade 130X.